Welcome to Spirit School. I'm your mentor, Danielle Serenk, also known as the Squamish Medium. In this podcast, I share honestly all I have learned about the mediumship and spiritual development journey. My intention is to normalize these conversations, to make way for a more confident, clear, and connected wave of lightworkers, serving the world of spirit with an open and joyful soul. Welcome again to Spirit School. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Spirit School podcast. This is your May Spirit Messages. Just a couple things before we get started. And Spirit has been impressing me for over a week now on the theme for May. And what's been fascinating is watching the world around me and how on theme I have seen the phrase that Spirit gave me Um, to talk about as a way to like launch off the um, spirit messages. I've been watching it kind of like play out online, play out in my peripheral, like in my inner circle. So I'm really kind of excited to get into it. And I think that it's going to resonate with some people. So before we get there, you may notice the sound quality a little bit different on this podcast episode. I am literally recording this episode on my voice notes app on my phone. I did get from the Apple Store, if you go to the Apple Store, if you have an iPhone, they have a little Rode R-O-D-E microphone for your phone that is so cute. (laughs) It plugs into the bottom and it's got the little fuzzy thing around it and it's adorable. So I'm having to use that for my phone because it's Mercury Retrograde and for some reason my adapter that goes from my computer to my podcast mic completely died like overheated it and every time I plug in I get this error on my computer take out faulty USB and I'm like oh god so we'll figure that out when we have time because I just don't have time right now (laughs) so I'm recording this on my phone so if the sound quality is a little bit different now you know why I am also recording this on May 1st Now, for those of you who follow me, you know that I just hosted my first ever retreat, the Sacred Spirit Retreat, where I had 28 people from around North America come to the woods, come to the mountains to come hang out with me for a whole week. And I'm going to do a separate episode just on the retreat, like the planning, the prepping, the, you know, what transpired was nothing short of miraculous and absolutely inspirational. And I cannot wait to go back. It was absolutely incredible, but I'm going to share that in a different episode. But as you can imagine, leading up to May 1st, um, April was really, really busy with retreat prep and there were some last minute changes that were a little bit stressful and just navigating my nervous system repair work and try not to undo everything that I have been repairing since 2018 when I had my first anxiety attack. And it took me about two or three years to repair my nervous system just from that experience. And so all the stress that has been coming up and, you know, I have my hands in like 10 different fires just trying to stay well during it because my human always wants me to keep going and get it done no matter what but my spirit is saying rest and so one of my big things of growth from the month of April I found was there were times where logically according to the way that society tells us to live our life I should be pursuing more and doing more and I could catch that programming come up when I was stressed and because I was stressed I lacked a bit of you know decision making and movement forward and a few times I had to like look at my computer and just say to myself the answer is not in this computer like you have to get out and I could catch myself in insecure moments um, of like doubting myself, of like stress, of fear come in. And I could see that my auto response, which comes from a place of trauma, was saying, do more. You have to do more. You have to show up more. You have to create more. You need to like launch more, et cetera, et cetera. And I chose differently in April. And that was really surprising for me. And in some ways, it was a big sacrifice, but in other ways, where I'm at today, I feel like I'm in a much healthier place because of it, because there were times where my conditioning was saying, do more, you need to be doing more. And I chose to rest. 
every single time. So I'm standing here in May after my retreat. Um, I never crashed after the retreat. I never burnt out. It was nothing short of just energizing. I saw myself clearer than I have ever seen myself before. I saw my path forward clearer than I've ever seen it before. And so I feel like that was a testament to just choosing differently in April for myself when, you know, in all respects, shit kind of hit the fan and it was really busy. And you may know or may not know by this point, but I'm building a school. So Spirit School, it's May 1st today. I get the keys to Spirit School on May 5th. So on Friday, she's all mine. So, you know, on top of planning this retreat and executing this retreat, which was awesome, you know, keep in mind I planned the retreat before I even saw this location for my school. And I never could have anticipated that I would be doing both at once, but it has been extremely busy and stressful, um, but also magical and, and blissed and just I'm so excited. So I will talk a bit more about that in another episode as well. I won't go too deep into it here, but you know, I'm recording this. I'm doing meditation Monday in the gathering space right now, which is a free guided visualization in spirit schools platform every Monday, myself or my friend Sharla, um, which I'll talk a bit more about Sharla in a couple episodes as well, but she's going to help me out in the gathering space doing some meditation Mondays. So either myself or Sharla will be there every single Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific time to guide you through a 30 minute guided visualization as a way to kind of like start off your week right. So sometimes it will be a traditional sitting in the power. Other times we're just going to see where the spirit world takes us. So there's no rules. There's no nothing to prep you for. It's just show up and give yourself 30, you know, seconds or 30 minutes of time for yourself to start your week off right and connect it into your light. And then the other thing I was just going to say is the initiation online. My eight-week mediumship foundations experience starts May 19th. So I'm really happy we have so many alumni coming back, some of them for the third time, literally the third time in a row I have people coming back. So if you've taken the initiation before, you get it for 222 um, because the pre-course work and the recorded material um, is the same. But the classes that I teach live are always different. The Q&As are always different. The community experience is always different. You also get, you know, two practice partner pairings a week. So it's a real, you know, sense of community. And that's what people get mostly out of it. It's not even, you know, all of a sudden I'm a medium and I'm here to do this thing. It's like, no, I made so many friends. I met so many people. And a lot of the people who meet in the initiation stay friends for a very long time and feel that sense of community. And let me tell you, this is a great lead into the spirit messages. And it was actually what we got at the retreat. We got an incredible sense of community and there was a lot of blissfulness. And, you know, it was incredible to watch because, you know, even in the initiation as well, it's like watching friendships being formed, watching people who don't have a lot of, you know, resources around them in the way of people and and groups and community to talk about spiritual things with and, you know, break away from, you know, some of the other identities and roles that you hold in your life. We had somebody at the retreat just say, you know, I'm a mom of many, I won't say to you know, keep confidentiality, but she has a lot of kids and she's like, everyone knows me as mom here. Nobody asked me about my kids. Like it's about me and like my growth and my development. And so a lot of, you know, what's happening right now for us is kind of seeing our spirituality and our spiritual evolution as being, you know, a part of our identity that many of us feel like we want to take more precedence in our life. And this is the theme of the spirit messages and so interesting that it rolls in so easily. That's like how I know I'm supposed to start talking about it because what the world of spirit was bringing to me last week as I was feeling into the energy of May, they were saying it's time to let people in. It's time to start letting people in. And this is for every one of you out there. Every one of you out there who is listening, it's time to start letting people in. So we have this belief that is very popular in the spiritual space called the spiritual closet. I'm still in the spiritual closet. Um, When I came out of the spiritual closet, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the world of spirit is talking about not seeing it as you having to come out of like this big hoorah 
and like, you know, this huge party um, or, you know, you think that you're going to come out with like lights on you and like glitter falling from the ceiling. It's more like, no, you have this experience that you're having. You have started to create your spiritual philosophy. You have started to tune into your inner light and get a sense of who you actually are at the most core essence of your being, which is light. And you are finding joy in it and you're finding um, a purpose of life in it. You're starting to see the interconnectedness between everything as you evolve more spiritually. And there is some shame that we carry. Um, you know, in trauma informed practice, we always say to ourselves, whose shame is this? But there's a lot of shame that we carry often when we are kind of like hiding out and like keeping this part of ourselves that feels so alive quiet. And so it's not so much like having to like come out and rejoin society as somebody new. It's like, no, I have changed. I have been changing. I like who I am becoming. I like where this is heading. And I'm going to start letting people into this experience. And even the energy, and I'm covered in shivers even talking about it, the energy of letting people in is like so sovereign and it's a lot less work and labor for you. So, you know, people will have the reactions that they have. I'm here to tell you that most of the reactions you have out there are going to be nothing short of supportive and energizing for you as people open up to their own spiritual experiences. And that's what you'll find more of. But there will be a certain amount of people who won't get it or won't be ready for it. And that's their deal right? That's their shame. That's something that they need to work through. You're just kind of highlighting that within them by you sharing yourself and sharing the things that have been coming up for you. So this is how come in the trauma-informed space we say, whose shame is this? And I invite you in the world of spirit invites you, your guides, your angels, your ancestors invite you is if you are considering opening up to the outer world about your spirituality, about your spiritual curiosities and your ideas and your beliefs and having an exchange of a belief, then any resistance that you feel around that may or may not actually be yours to carry. We tend to carry everything that we feel and everything that we think, but not everything is ours to carry. Often we are carrying an overhang or, you know, a hangover. I said that backwards. But like often we are carrying a hangover of the beliefs that were imparted on us growing up in the systems we grew up in, in the families that we grew up in, and no shade to our families because everyone's just doing the best they can. But there is a reason why this hesitation comes up and it's a real lived experience reason. But it's our responsibility to look at that and look at that shadow work and to, you know, decide if that's actually how we want to live. You know, I always think about this as, and I think about this from a me lens of what I went through and how, you know, I tell people, and I said this at the retreat to somebody and she was like, you know, I just need help getting out of the spiritual closet. And I, I, maybe this is even where it kind of like stemmed from. And I said, well, what's your fear? Like, what is the exact fear around this? And, you know, just kind of like having a conversation and a dialogue about, well, so-and-so will think this and -and so-and-so will think that. And I'm here to say, and I've said this before on this podcast, we came from such an incredible place and we returned to such an incredible place that I like to call home. And while we're here, I just got a huge whiff of flowers. As I was talking about that, it completely took my attention. Just one breath in this incredible scent of flowers just overwhelmed me wow okay let me see if I can get my thoughts back together because it completely overwhelmed me the sense of like roses coming in that was quite profound actually so okay let me go back a little bit and what I was talking about that completely drew my attention away tuning back in here and we were kind of talking about you know coming out of the spiritual closet and I said to her there's a difference between hiding and just not sharing right when I was really in the spiritual closet myself I was hiding I wasn't just not sharing I was actually hiding and when we look at the reasons why I kept thinking about whose opinions am I most concerned about right now and I did a bit of a scan in my life and it's like okay my boss who I admire so much and we're still very close friends to this day her opinion matters to me 
Absolutely. And I started doing a scan of my life. And this is the invitation of the month of May. As you start sharing more of yourself, looking at whose opinions you actually value and hold um, influence over you. And then everything else, can you let it go and not carry any of that? Because we actually don't have to carry it all. And that is one of the best practices in trauma-informed care. We ask ourselves when we can see very clearly that there is an emotion of shame coming up. This is what I do. I just say, whose shame is this? Because it's not mine. And then once I bring that awareness around to it, I can release and let go of everything that is not mine to carry. So the invitation for May, because there's a lot of shifts happening. I think, you know, everyone's talking about that and it's not going to go away. The shift is absolutely happening at this time. We can sense it. We can feel it. We see it in our systems of the world, our political environment. Um, We even see like our education system starting to get, you know, challenged and evolved and broadening in, in a lot of different respects and parts of the world. And so we see these shifts coming. And we see how dark it has gotten over the past couple of years and how much that light is needed. So the world of spirit is actually, and they're super close right now, are saying we actually need you to start letting more people in because this is the only way that we're going to start really sharing that light source for us. Because the way that they're showing it to me right now is everyone kind of has this little candle light in, in their heart. That's how I see it, is in their heart space. But it's very much contained to their physical experience. And just through some intention and awareness, we can actually expand that light outwards. And what happens is, and I was talking about this at the retreat too, is that there's like this sympathetic resonance that becomes created. And funny enough, Spirit was downloading this thought to me just the day before the retreat. And I ended up re-changing how I opened it. But they were saying like, actually look up sympathetic resonance, like what that is, like study it. And so I did. And I, I looked at this research that was done on trying to validate through science the sympathetic resonance. And what they did was is they had a huge room full of violins in a circle. I would say maybe the one that I saw had about 12 to 20 violins. I didn't count them or anything like that. But somebody went up and plucked one of the strings of one of the violins. And what they were able to capture in the circle was every violin in that circle, the same string was also vibrating. So just because one you know, violin was plucked, all of the violin strings were vibrating. And this is how they were able to scientifically show that there is such thing as sympathetic resonance. So what the world of spirit has been bringing to my awareness for the past month in particular is your light matters. And they're actually having me swear right now. Your light fucking matters. Okay, like I need to say it with more condition, conviction. Your light fucking matters and I'm so sorry for swearing baby earmuffs out there I apologize because I know so many of these kids listen to me in the car and I tell my kids too because I still swear sometimes I'm like it's not what you say it's how you say it right and this is the tricky thing about the English language is it's so limited words are limited how we say things matter it's not what we say right? I look at the language of, I love that for you. (laughs) That could be the biggest slap in the face or a huge kudos. It's how we say it that matters. So if I can normalize a little bit of the swearing, sometimes it's it's very justified and it's poignant to what we want to say. And this is what the world of spirit is saying. Your light, beep, matters, okay? Your light fucking matters. It really, really does. And if you look at this research around sympathetic resonance, that is what we're doing. When we tune into that light. When we expand that light out, other people will feel it. The ego wants to make sure we're making a difference. The ego wants to be validated that it matters. That's not what spirituality is about. It is not about being validated. It is about doing something for the greater evolution of our spiritual selves and of humanity. And that is how come we need to start letting people in. This is the time to shift the conversation. This is the time to shift the game. We are here to be as expansive as possible. We did not come all this way to live our lives for somebody else and with somebody else in consideration. This is about us, our destiny, our path, the impact that we want to make in our communities, in our families. And it's really about being a good ancestor. 
So the time is now, the world of spirit is saying, to start letting people in. Now, being aware that that doesn't mean that you need to have a party. It doesn't mean you need to have, you know, a big event that you do this huge thing. That's what I did, by the way. It was humiliating. <laughs> That's what it meant to me. Um, coming out, making a big hoopla about it. It was crickets in the end because I was like, guess what? No one actually really cares. All this caring that I think people place on me, they don't because everyone's all worried about their own stuff. They're not, they're not thinking about us as much as we think they are. So what's the harm? You know, being very mindful of your own window of tolerance with this. And I'm not asking anyone to, you know, put a sign out in their front lawn or anything like that or hang a shingle, if you will. But maybe in your daily interactions, you drop in a little nugget about energy or a dream you had or a synchronicity that you experienced. And you would be so surprised at the conversations that start to unfold around you. And you would be surprised at how expansive you feel and how the atmosphere changes because of that sympathetic resonance. And then all of a sudden you leave in exchange uplifted, hopeful. And that's what this is about. It's the little incremental experiences that create the greatest change. So in that way, our light matters and what we do with it matters even more. And so this is an invitation for you for May to look and do a scan at your life. Whose opinion has influence over you? Whose opinion really matters? And for some of you, the decision is going to be a little bit trickier and stickier than others. And here's what Spirit's saying about that. They're making me feel that there is some religious trauma. And they're like our in-laws, I'm hearing, that people are really concerned about. Oh, the in-laws. Oh, the in-laws. And my, what I'm feeling inspired to say, and I feel like this may even be coming from my higher self in all transparency, but I feel very much that Spirit says that you're living in more pain now than if you were to just be yourself and be open. And I don't think that it's as dangerous out there as it was 10, 15, 20, 50 years ago. I think the world is much more open to this than we think. So something to consider as you are tuning into um, how you want to live your life. And there's a big season of change, you know, like huge season of change right now in May. And I don't think who you are on May 1st is going to be the same of who you are on May 30th actually don't know how many days are in May, but that was the number that came up to my head. And I'm just going to full, pull a couple cards. Um, I'm just going to pull a couple cards to see what else kind of comes through. Um, oh my gosh. Okay. Holy crap. Okay. So I, I'm just pulling three cards because I got to wrap this up a little bit quicker today because I'm heading into my um, Monday meditation here in a few minutes. But the first card I got, you know, I only use John Holland Psychic Tarot, as you guys know, um, the Triumph card. It's literally somebody holding a sword coming out of the ground, coming out of the earth literally coming out of the earth victory triumph and success the number one card which is you know the first step of the new beginnings your new beginning started when you started waking up to your light to your spirituality this is the beginning of the journey for so many of you and it's successful and the light is reflecting off the sword and so the light is there and accessible for you it's your awareness around it that needs to grow and then the second card is the seven card and it's like literally the same being coming out of the ground standing on top of the earth with fire in their belly and their staff raised up to the air and it stand your ground these things that you want to share with the world you have spent a lot of time thinking about contemplating on spiritual contemplation even having some dialogues with people who you've been fortunate enough to meet in the spiritual space and so you don't need to convince anyone else of your beliefs because your beliefs are your choice everyone's beliefs are their choice nobody is forced to believe something we grow up with a certain set of belief and we become fully frontal cortex developed human beings at 25 plus years old we get to form our own beliefs based off of our own experiences and so standing your ground on your beliefs knowing that they will change and evolve as you do is very important because a lot of us think that we need to fight for our beliefs but we don't we just need to be in harmony with our own experience with our own beliefs that is it and if somebody else wants to argue with them with them that's their thing that's not a you thing you're not responsible for them so please 
take that um take that because I think a lot of you are like but I'm not ready to like stand for this you don't have to the world of spirit doesn't need you to do that the world of spirit just needs you to know who the f you are that is it this whole journey of humanity is just remembering who we are and we came here to forget to remember so that's what this month is about and then the last card which is my angel card which is the number four it's foundation and achievements make no mistake there are great spiritual rewards for those who are willing to be courageous enough to not only be aware of their light but give their light and expand their light and be that main violin that makes that first pluck of their string and you know creates a ripple effect that is unseen by most of us but felt deeply amongst each other and this is going to help you create a foundation you do have to let people in eventually why not now why not now? And if you are someone who is afraid that there might be a bit of trauma that comes up with it, please learn some coping techniques before you go do something like this. I'm not asking anyone to stretch themselves to a point where, you know, it actually hinders your quality of life. I'm talking to the people who this will resonate with and you will know that it's time in your heart. You'll just be hearing me. And for some of you, this may come up next May. It may come up in a couple of weeks. Who knows? But eventually, we need to start letting people in or else we're going to get to the end of our days with a bit of regret. And that is some of my biggest life's work. And it's been since day one, I've been really clear on this, that I want people to feel excited about their lives when they work with me. No matter if it's a reading, a mediumship reading, mediumship development, every exchange with me, I am so clear on why I'm here and how I want to show up. And it's to get people excited about their lives again. And, you know, that spiritual reward that the world of spirits talking about is an increase of synchronicity. Um, sensations that come near I just got the you know a couple minutes ago you guys heard me like this floral scent coming right through that doesn't happen very much at all and so I still don't know who that is just FYI or what that was about but it was welcomed it was lovely it was it was incredible and it's like those little moments that energize you and help you feel really connected there's more of that on the horizon there's a deeper sense of self. There's more confidence. And in the wise words of my, you know, colleague, Sheila V, it helps increase your spiritual self-esteem. And so this is what's on the horizon for us. And this is what I feel like is potential for us in the back half of this year. Um, you know, through listening to my January forecast that I couldn't see past September. I think that we are still in one of the greatest times of our existence of divine free will. I don't think that the future is set. I think every little choice that we make makes a difference to the greater collective future that we see together. So don't get overwhelmed with all the crap that's happening in the world. Just focus on your own life and what you want it to do and how you want to create an impact through it. So I hope that these messages really resonate with you. I hope you're feeling inspired about the month ahead. Let me know how you feel about it in spirit school. Come have a conversation with us. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. If you want to learn more about mediumship development, um, definitely going to be running the initiation again I may run it again in fall but I don't know I I'm still kind of like playing everything by ear because of um spear school coming in so this may be the last time I run it this year I don't know but it's really fun and I teach mediumship development not just to have you be a medium I want you to love your life I want you to know that you are a spiritual being that has the full capacity to connect in with the world of spirit we all do this is a program of remembrance of who you are and where you come from and for some of you you may feel a call to serve spirit in that capacity in that way for others it's just going to be skills techniques resources that help guide you on the path to where you're going which is a spiritual one everyone who's listening to this podcast is on a spiritual path right so if you want to come learn about energy about spirit guides about departed loved ones about mediumship um, I've ran it nine times it's my favorite program I welcome you in alumni you're always welcome back and uh, yeah I'm going to try to do an in-person one by the end of the year a week-long experience at spirit school probably in the fall I'm going to see what it's like to do this in person too so Lots of fun stuff coming up. Um, but yes, I hope you enjoy the spirit messages. Sorry, they're a little bit late, but they're actually earlier.
scarier than I thought they were going to be. And for those of you who are in Spirit School's platform, I will see you at Meditation Monday and all the other fun things that we have going on in that space. All right, friends. Bye. Did you know that Spirit School is not just a podcast? It's an actual school. If you go to myspiritschool.com, you can invest in self-study courses, live programs, and of course, the Spirit School Collective, my baby, my monthly membership community. All Spirit School offerings are intended to get you feeling clear, confident, and connected to your spiritual path, your development journey, and of course, connected to other spiritual curious souls who are having similar experiences to you. I hope to see you in Spirit School.